I grew up in Winnipeg. And the music system in St. James was great. So I was in a band with a, a friend of mine who went on to front the uh, band Crash Test Dummies. And I spent a lot of time practicing because it was really cold in the winter. I probably wouldn't have done that if I lived in Cancun. <laughs> I started doing uh, some gigs around Winnipeg, jobbing gigs and jazz gigs and all that, but, but those were my first paying gigs, which is pretty fun, you know? You're going, man, I'm getting paid for this? This is awesome. <laughs> so I moved to Toronto and lived in a house right beside George's Spaghetti House, which no longer exists, but uh, it was a very interesting place to live because it was in a pretty funky part of Toronto. We'd have people breaking in to the house all the time and like I'd go out in my car, the windshield wipers would be bent, you know, and like somebody would have broken the window to try to get some change. <laughs> in Toronto, the musicians were so cool with me. It was awesome. You know, like Steve Wallace was one of my heroes and, and I'd go in there and go, you know, Steve, hey, I'm like a you know, new bass player. And you go, hey, come on and sit in. And Joe Seeley was another guy that really helped me out. I had his number from a guy named Billy Georgette in Montreal. He said, phone Joe Seeley and tell him that, you know, I'd really love to play with you sometime or, you know, if you have any gigs or whatever. And he said, I'm really busy, but, but you know, I'll keep your number kind of thing. I was just kind of sitting around one night and I get a call from Joe. And he says, Mike, are you working tonight? Uh, can you do a gig right now? And I said, well, like, what time does it start? And he says, it starts at 9. It's 9.15. <laughs> so I, I threw on a suit. I went down to uh, Yorkville. And after the gig, he says, oh, man, if I knew you were such a good bass player, I wouldn't have blown you off like that. But, but it, yeah, it was like, that's how I kind of got started in the scene. Nowadays, you have to be an entrepreneur. You're a business, and you kind of have to have all cylinders firing, you know, which means uh, a lot of, you know, going here and there, a lot of traveling. Uh, I've worked really hard at getting gigs and, you know, maintaining a career and all that. So you have to have passion. You've got to have a really solid work ethic. And then you have to be willing to deal with the fact that it's kind of a nutty thing. Like it just, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna pull you this way, it's gonna pull you that way. Sometimes you're gonna be super busy. Sometimes you'll be twiddling your thumbs and, you know, and, and in those moments, you know, that's when you could take advantage of it rather than going, oh, I wish I was working, you know. You can say, wow, all the stuff I've been meaning to practice or whatever I can do now. I think playing jazz music is dealing with adversity <laughs> just right off the bat. Um, you know, it's a very small percentage of the population that, that likes jazz music. It takes a particular kind of person to, you know, live and breathe this music that we play, but it takes a really, really special person to kind of deal with everything that goes with that. My wife is awesome. She did my album artwork for the last uh, bunch of albums that I did. She basically says, you, you know, this, I know that you need to do this. And I, I, I happen to have just won a Juno this year. Um, and I, in my acceptance speech, I thanked her. She was there at the ceremony with me, which was fantastic. It's a very interesting life. It's a different kind of life, you know, it's, it's incredible. <laughs>